Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Jesse Frost longed to get back to his Kentucky roots, to grow his own food and live off the land. And in 2011, he made it happen. At the end of this video, we'll learn how Jesse constructed a profitable farm on just three quarters of an acre. But first, if you are trying to build your own homestead, Soil health is one of the most important factors in making you a success. And your decisions around tillage have an outsized impact on your soil. So in today's video, we have the top things you should know about tilling. Number one, what is tilling soil? Tilling occurs when you turn the soil over and over until it's broken up. Tilled soil is often cultivated to a depth of eight to 10 inches. And it can be done by hand if you have a small area but is more often done with large tilling equipment. Number two, why do farmers and gardeners till their soil? Tilling can have a variety of positive effects on gardening and agriculture, which is why it's been done for centuries. Here are a few of those impacts. Tilling loosens and aerates the soil, which helps to facilitate the planting of crops. Tilling helps mix harvest residue, organic material, and nutrients evenly into the soil. It also mechanically removes weeds, dries the soil before seeding, and it can help expose soil crumble during the winter to prepare a smooth surface for spring planting. Number three, wait a minute, you may be saying, I've heard a lot of criticism about soil tilling. Are there negative effects as well? And yes, there are downsides to tilling, such as drying out the soil. Tilling soil also prompts it to lose nutrients like nitrogen, and it can decrease the water infiltration rate, which ultimately leads to more runoff and erosion. Furthermore, tilling reduces organic matter, earthworms, and microbes in the soil. It destroys soil aggregates, increases soil compaction, attracts slugs, cutworms, armyworms, and harmful insects, and can also prompt crop diseases. Number four. If you are about to till your soil for the first time, what are some must-knows? First of all, the soil should be moist but not soaking wet before tilling. Before tilling, you'll also want to clear all surface debris such as sticks and rocks. When you prepare a seed bed, go over the same path twice in the first row. Then overlap one half the tiller width on the rest of the passes. Once you've finished in one direction, make a second pass at a right angle. Overlap each pass for the best results. It's generally a good idea to till only on moderate slopes. Never till soil on steep ground where footing is difficult. When tilling on slopes, till vertically or in up and down directions rather than terracing. This allows maximum planting area and leaves room for cultivating. In addition, when tilling on a hill, make the first pass uphill as the tiller digs more deeply when going uphill than it does downhill. When tilling, be sure to add organic matter to the soil to help it hold moisture and avoid leaving footprints or wheel marks. Number five, can you overtill soil? The short answer is yes. Remember all those negative impacts of tilling? They can add up over time and one of the biggest problems with tilling soil is soil erosion and degradation. Both of these factors occur over time if you're tilling each year because annual tilling causes too much stress for the microorganisms in the soil to handle. Which is why many farmers and experts advocate no-till or low-till farming. While tilling has its benefits, in the long run it can do more harm than good by eroding the soil and removing plant matter that enriches it. From a soil perspective, no-till farming can be hugely beneficial because it leaves the soil structure intact and protects the soil by leaving crop residue on the surface. Which brings us back to Jesse Frost. Jesse and his wife Hannah are Kentucky natives. Both had moved to a big city, New York and Chicago respectively, before returning home, drawn by the urge to get back to the land. They wanted a plot of land they could make better, one that may require taming, but which would be fertile enough to supply food for themselves and then some. Yet, as so many of us do, they quickly ran into the financial realities of land purchasing. Prices were just too high. 
And so, like most homesteaders and first-time farmers, they started small. Very small. Three-quarters of an acre small. And when farming high production this small, you need to take particular care with your soil. For Jesse and Hannah, soil care meant eliminating tillage. Instead, they rely on an intercropping system that utilizes four types of compost and several types of mulch designed to decrease pests while leaving the soil intact. And this is not a fringe strategy. The elimination of tillage combined with cover cropping is a proven method to regenerate soil. However, for Jesse, the switch to no-till farming was not just about soil health. Tillage reduction also allowed him to cut down on labor and eliminated nearly all the work he used to put into cultivation. Today, he's able to supply all his own food and generate 60000 in revenue from his three-quarter acre vegetable plot. If he can do it, so can you. But do you have any stories about tilling or homesteading? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down listings at gokchecapital.com listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening and more to come.